Thank you for tuning in to this video. I'd like to make a few comments about the 21-day payment hold that PayPal has been putting on a number of accounts. And apparently, uh, from my research and from what I have seen with videos on YouTube, this is something that is randomly done. And it's done, you would like to presume almost, that it's just done against those that have defrauded customers that these are sellers that they have put holes on their account that have just uh, falsely advertised or ripped off people or didn't send them the merchandise after they paid for it but it actually happens to people who do have 100 percent feedback and who have been upright in their proper uh, business dealings with uh, the e-commerce e business here on eBay and whatever other platform they use now, you know, there's times in life that if we play by the rules and we do everything that we're supposed to do that that's right in any given forum, whether it be business or uh, whatever uh, arena that we're in in life, whatever drama we're having to deal with, we kind of like to believe, and we find out later foolishly so, we kind of venture upon the presumption that since we did right and played by all the rules, that everybody else is going to play by the rules and do right by us. But alas, uh, we find out that that's really not the case at times. And that's why a lot of people are incited with malice against PayPal and eBay. Because PayPal and eBay are dealing with an imbalanced equation here on how they're going to be able to please both the buyer and the seller. And right now, and I understand it's, it's proper to protect the buyer, but you have to protect the seller also. Uh, I've even sent them a letter one time giving them the example that if I sold proof condition coins, which is a little higher level above uncirculated, and if a payment is made to me and they freeze the payment for 21 days, and I send that coin uh, to the person, and they lay it on the table and their child comes along and takes it and plays with it through the day and scratches it and scarfs it up, then that person, if they're unethical, they can uh, they can contact uh, PayPal and say, don't give them the payment, I want my money back. They didn't really send me a coin in proof condition, it's all scratched up. And really it was their child that scratched it up. And so there you are without a payment, they've got your proof coin, they've got your merchandise, and then we, if you ever do get it back, it's all scarred and scratched up and you can't sell it to anyone. So it's really uh, this 21-day payment whole thing. And uh, for the advantage of the buyer, it's not a, a proper balanced equation that's going to work right in every given business scenario when it pertains to PayPal and eBay. Now... I just want to give you a parallel example of sometimes how things happen in life and I'm going to get right back to this subject and tell you what happened to me recently and I do have a 100 percent feedback uh, from all my customers you read everything I've ever sold on eBay everything people just go on and on and just oh I mean I've got wonderful feedback for all the things that I've made out of steel and the collectibles that I've sold people have just raved over it, giving me wonderful feedback and still I recently got a email from them saying we're putting 21 day hold on your account and I wished it wouldn't have incited me as much as it did I wish I wouldn't have really got as perturbed as I did but what really lit a fire under me is when I went and seen all these other videos on YouTube and then I realized what was happening to others and I felt like I might ought to add my voice in along with everyone else's and tell you how I handled the situation. Now I'll share with you in just a little bit a letter that I wrote to a number of them because you can get their names and email addresses and phone numbers online because some of their disgruntled employees have published that information. So now when you want to send an email to eBay or PayPal uh, you can do it from the you know you can actually get right into all their offices with an email. When you send them a disgruntled email, you'd send it to 20 or 30 different departments all with the push of a button at one time and a copy of that email is going to go to eBay, it's going to go to PayPal executives and, uh, and I made sure I covered all those bases. 
even wrote a hand personal letter to Don, uh, John Donahue, uh, very wealthy man, CEO. He earned eight million two hundred and fifty-two thousand two hundred and seventy-six dollars last year, being the CEO. And I'm glad he's a prosperous man, like Meg Whitman was when she was CEO. It's a good, high-paying job, and uh, I like to see people prosper and make money. So it's not a jealous thing for me to mention his salary. I'm not trying to. That's not done out of spitefulness or anything, and I'm not trying to exploit him. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm really thankful, uh, but I do feel like it was important to just let you know how uh, much that position does pay, so these people do make a lot of money, and that's the irony of it all, that they would withhold your money for 21 days. I mean, these are very wealthy people, and it gives you a little bit clearer of an insight that when you write a letter of complaint, just who you are dealing with. I mean, you know, I mean, I realize that the world does not revolve about, around me or you or uh, and everybody's got their own problems in life. But uh, but this is something that's affected a lot of people. And it's to the advantage, really, at the end of the day, to eBay and PayPal, or billion-dollar en entities that are making money uh, with interest off of your money that they're holding, even against those that have 100% feedback. But let me just kind of tell you how... Uh, let, let me give you a parallel example of what happened to me years ago. I went to work on a job building that new water treatment plant, in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I was the only stainless steel welder. I came in towards the end of the job. They needed a stainless steel pipe welder. And the pipe hadn't gotten there yet. So once they hired me, I had to do other welding jobs for them until the pipe arrived. And I used to park my vehicle across the street uh, at the library. And uh, every payday, every Friday evening, uh, I'd get my pay, and I'd go sit in my van and rest a little bit before I started it up and went to the where I was renting. And I'd look at the poor Mexican standing in line there to get their pay from this company, the contractor that the county of Pigeon Forge, the city of Pigeon Forge, had given the contract to. They were uh, contractors out of Atlanta. I wish I could... I really wish I could remember their name. But anyway, um, I would see those poor Mexicans stand in line, and boy, they would be ranting and raving and just, and I realized what was happening. They were paying some for their labor, but others, they were not paying for their labor at the end of the week. Uh, one company that, that hires workers and sends them out to these companies told me one time, they use a euphemizing term called, it's a bit of a misnomer, it's called budgeting. The word budgeting is submitted for theft and for withholding your money that you've worked for. Uh, sometimes those contractors try to wait for their money to come in. And so instead of paying all their workers, they give them some lame excuse why their check didn't make it through or the, uh, the payroll wasn't called in in time or the bookkeeper made a mistake and didn't send their check and they're calling the office to see what happened. Meanwhile, you have to wait another whole week without, and you that might have been the only money you had for food and gas to get back to work to that job for the next week. And you know, I used to watch this happen to them and I used to kind of smugly, I guess, I, I don't know, I hate to use that term, but I used to just, and I don't want to say self-arrogantly, God forbid that I would ever be that way, but and hope that I'm not, but I used to think that because I was the only person they had to weld that stainless steel pipe when it arrived, that they would never do that to me. Never. That they really needed me if anybody else won that job. And stainless steel pipe welders are hard to come by. Uh, stainless steel pipe welders right now in New Orleans are making $39 an hour. That's just straight time. Uh, inland, for inland welders, they are the highest paid welders. Stainless steel pipe welders are. So I thought, oh, they'll never do that to me. I'll never have to worry about that uh, happening to me. They'll do that to the poor Mexicans who are the laborers and uh, the muscle and blood, the grit and grime, uh, the ones they might demean as what they might call sometimes the sweat hogs on the job. But oh no, uh, I'm blessed to have a skill and a trade and they really need my talent and skill. And they'll never, never do that to me. <laughs> One week or so pass or two weeks. I went to get my paycheck on Friday, and uh, that pay wasn't there. They gave me some kind of lame excuse, and 
no, I no, I remember what it was now. I was missing two to three hundred dollars off my paycheck. It was at Shard. And they knew how many hours I had worked. And what they were doing, and they used that term budgeting. They were taking a little bit off of different people's checks. And, oh, well, we'll make it up next week. You see, they do that at times because they haven't got their pay yet. And they're dealing out of a pool of money that they have. And they have to, sometimes they purposely shortchange everybody's checks or they choose different ones each week to shortchange so that they can swing and get use your labor. But meanwhile, even though they shortchange you, you're still going to stay on the job for them after they do that to you. Till they get their money, and then at, towards the end, they will settle with everybody. But meanwhile, everybody's getting chipped out of, uh, periodically, that is, they're getting chipped out of their full paycheck, and they're having to suffer and tug along. And so uh, that's the way things happen sometimes. But they did it to me, and I said, oh, no, I need my all my money now. I said, I've got rent to pay and stuff. And, uh, and I felt like that they'd come across, because I was the only person hired that they had to weld all that stainless steel pipe to finish out the job. And until that job was finished, they would not get their money. And I knew that they were not going to be able to just at a moment's whim get a stainless steel pipe welder. But in spite of that, they got on the phone in front of me and they act like they were concerned. And I'm not saying they wasn't. But when they left me, no, no, it'll be next week. I said, well, no, I quit. I, I, I quit. I said, you can send me my money. We'll see y'all later. And I left, and now some would say, well, that's cutting your own nose off to spite your face. They, they, they have a big company. They might have paid you next week. But, you know, sometimes when you see this happening week after week like they were doing to the Mexican people, some people have to be the martyr in life. Some people really have to uh, bear the cross and take the punishment. Even if it hurts them, they have to speak out. And, yes, that did put that company in a bind. Now, I don't know how long it took them after I left to get another stainless steel pipe welder. And then, two, it just by chance, uh, a wild hair out of heaven, they actually might have been able to get one the next day. They might have uh, offered one an extreme amount of salary and flown him in from another city because before they got that pipe welded in, they didn't get their money. I mean, they might have went to the extreme, but if they did, they had to pay more of a price than if they would have just paid me what they owed me rightly uh, when I was due my money. They wouldn't have had to do all that. They wouldn't have had to worry a fret. Uh, so sometimes some people do have to pay the price. And every one of you on YouTube and eBay, you do pay a price when you take the time out and you go online because you're, you're giving up some of your time in life. Life is made of time. But you're giving up your time and energy to have to deal with a situation that normally you wouldn't have if you wouldn't have been done wrong. I found out a long time ago that there is more power in the pen than there is in the sword. Sometimes there's more power in the keyboard, in, in the voice, than there is in the sword, the gun, uh, or whatever instrument of... Uh, that could be used otherwise that could cause great harm or hurt. Uh, when people do you wrong and people who are living uh, unrighteously and unethically in their business dealings with others, people like this fear one thing more than anything else, more than the gun or the sword, they fear the truth. Because the truth exposes them for what they are. And they don't like for people to know who they are, what they are, what they've become with their unethical dealings with their fellow man. Now, I thought it was important to, I want to give you a little information, and I don't want to get bore you with too much technicality here. But before I give you a dose of the letter that I wrote on, uh, PayPal that is, once they sent me a letter stating that they had withheld, uh, put a hold on my money for 21 days. Now, it was only 20 some dollars. I really feel so, but it was the, it was, it was just, the uh, the ethics behind it. It was very unethical to do to someone who had 100% feedback. And I was getting ready to publish another book and, uh, and, it, and advertise it to an audience of 16 million people on another platform. And had just a thousand copies of that book sold, that would have been $25,000 in PayPal's account if people would have used PayPal to pay me. Uh, and suppose they would have wrote me a letter stating we put a hold on this money and I need part of that money to uh, do another batch of printing of books or whatever. 
Well, so I'm glad it happened to me at the $20 level because now I will make sure, I'll let it be known that I will not accept any PayPal payments uh, for this new book that I'm getting ready to publish. Uh, but let me tell you when, you, when you actually write a letter to eBay or PayPal and you vent out your rage, you know, sometimes you might be under the misguided notion that you are dealing with one person that owns PayPal and eBay and that you're punishing them for uh, your rage, uh, or your reprisal verbally of what you're telling them or what you think about them. And uh, let me tell you what you're up against, first of all. Uh, Pierre Omidyar, O-M-I-D-Y-A-R. He was the founder of uh, eBay in 1995. Now, he, uh, he is the, uh, eBay is not owned by just one person. Uh, actually, uh, now, Mr. Pierre, he owns 132,448 shares. Uh, no, 132,448 uh, 408 shares. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. He owns 132,448,408 shares of eBay. So eBay is a shareholder company. Uh, Michael R. Jacobson, he owns 408,648 shares. Uh, Robert Holmes Swan, he owns 296,425 shares. Scott Thompson owns 219,762 shares. Uh, John J. Donahoe owns 181,876 shares uh, of eBay. Now, I'm not talking about PayPal right now. I'm talking about eBay, but eBay owns PayPal. Okay. Now, the top institutional holders of eBay. Now, I'm just trying to give you, a, I'm only giving you this information, uh, and I'm not going to drag it out. I'm going to finish, uh, give you a few more technicalities and uh, l let you hear some of what I wrote them in a letter uh, to just add with the rest of you all out there of how people are dealing with, in response to this 21-day payment hole, how they're dealing with eBay and PayPal. Okay. Uh, the top institutional holders of eBay is Janus Capital Management. Uh, now, they own 86,907,785 shares worth $2,804,521. That's the value. Okay, another institution holder of eBay is Wellington Management Company. They own 66 million. 83,409 shares worth $2,132,511,608. Okay, then you're looking at FMR LLC, and uh, they, uh, now FMR, they have 60,558,000. Eight hundred and thirty shares, and uh, the value is one billion four hundred and twenty-seven million nine hundred and nine thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars. Okay, then you got Vanguard Group. Vanguard Group. Uh, now they have uh, forty-four million two hundred forty-eight thousand eight hundred thirty shares, and uh, uh, you know what? I got my figures mixed up. Now FMR. Uh, their value was actually uh, FMR was one billion nine hundred fifty-four million two hundred twenty-eight thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, Vanguard Group, uh, they are they're they're worth uh, one billion four hundred twenty-seven million nine hundred nine thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars. Uh, then you've got the uh, you got Dodge and Cox Incorporated. Uh, now they have 42 million, uh, 791,439 shares. And, um, let's see, I think that they're worth, I think, 1,380,879,779 dollars. Uh, and, uh, there's a few more. Uh, I, I won't give you all of them. Let me just give you one more. And there's four or five more Oppenheimer funds. 
Incorporated. Now they own 33,213,047 shares, and that's worth 1,071,785,026. Now these figures as are as of June the 30th, 2011. But now it goes beyond that with eBay. I'm just giving, trying to give you an example that when you write your little letter of complaint, and even us when we get on YouTube and stuff and, and voice our opinions, it's it's not like you're going up against one person. Uh, uh, the top mutual fund holders uh, are Dodge and Cox Stock Fund, Janus 20 Fund, Janus 40 Fund, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, Fide Fidelity, Contra Fund Incorporated, Power Shares, uh, uh, exchange, uh, and then uh, it goes on and on. And uh, the value is up in the hundreds of millions of dollars for each one of these companies that uh, I've just told you about. So you see, I've said all that to kind of really make this point here. Whenever you write a letter to PayPal or eBay, you vent your rage. It's not like you're browbeating or punishing anyone that's really going to take it like that. It's only an employee that's going to get that letter. But now, their employees love for you to write those letters. You know why? The reason why a lot of their employees hate with everything that hate can hate with. The companies of PayPal and eBay that they work for. And the reason why I know that they hate it so much that they hate anybody that don't hate it concerning their fellow employees. I worked for a place one time where a friend of mine used to walk around the floor and he'd say, I hate this place so much that I hate anybody that doesn't hate it. When people heard that, they, they picked up that saying and walked around the floor all day long. They'd look at one another and say, I hate this place so much, I hate anybody that don't hate it. And they, they'd be saying that at the time clock when they punched in and punched out. It's amazing how you can drop a line sometimes on somebody and it just your words can incite malice and stuff and, and really bring down a company that invited a union even to, to try to get into that company. Uh, it only took one person to start breeding contempt. Uh, but the workers of eBay and PayPal, because they've seen these people, these entities, millionaire entities, rip off so many people and they've heard so many thousands of complaints, especially the 21 day uh, payment hold that's happened to even some of them as being their employees even probably. Uh, they're sick of the very companies they work for and they love to get letters of rage so that they can actually put those letters on the desk of their superiors that will vent out the contempt and ver the verbal contempt of scorn or however you want to label it or complaining or proclaiming the truth as it really is. Uh, they love putting those type of letters on their superiors desk because that is their way of venting out the rage of their own souls against the company that they work for that they would like to say themselves to their superiors but they can't without the reprisal of being fired so actually they love receiving those letters they do and they wish more of you would send in letters and stuff when things like this happen to you because they love putting those letters on the, uh, but, but once again it's like uh, even when you go to the top of the line, uh, Mr. John Donahoe, I'm sure he's a fine fellow, fine fellow. Uh, I mean, he's just a stockholder, but he's one of the top stockholders. So I would think that to a certain degree, those top stockholders, they are concerned about uh, uh, the people's complaints or their issues that they are taking up because after all, it might be small and incremental at first, but in the long run, it is going to affect their business. Um, now I'll just give you a little bit of a letter that I sent to them. <coughs> and I think a lot of you, now I'm, I'm going to leave a bit of it out. I'm just going to give you some of it on how I dealt with them. Uh, you all have frozen my account. I have 100% feedback. I went on YouTube and listed uh, to many uh, I've listened to many others go on and on, even a school teacher, how you froze their accounts also. And no doubt this is done so you can collect interest off of their money for 21 days. 
only had three things listed right now, but was getting ready to publish another book, which now I don't plan on selling on eBay at all. And I'm getting ready to go uh, my advertising platforms I use other than eBay and tell them I do not accept PayPal payments anymore, postal money orders only. Uh, if it sells, it does. If it, if, and if not, it doesn't. I'm not going to let people hold my money like you all are doing. I can understand if I did anything wrong, but never have, uh, but never have, for I have all good feedback. Uh, now, you may arrogantly say, take your business elsewhere, because uh, through using other people's money to gain interest off of, you have already become billionaires. But as time comes and goes, many others will drop you also, and your income will decrease. How low life can you be? To thank you, people get a cut off of everyone's labor and produce, but that's not enough for you. You want to freeze people's account and keep their money to make that interest off of it. Thanks for showing the world what you are made out of. I will probably send the Department of Justice a letter on your monopoly and put out a video on YouTube to try to persuade others also uh, to do so, joining the thousands of others that you have messed over. I will send the Department of Justice a copy of this email also to you. In days to come, you will see that your monopoly uh, will just be your employees that show up to work that... Uh, uh, you have to pay for thousands you have done this two will leave off using your services now of course this may never happen but I mean they will lose some business over doing people this and it may be in into the number of thousands I'm so glad that you only have a little over $20 uh, of my money and if anyone purchases what I have left on eBay I will let you hold their money not mine uh, because I'm not going to ship it until you release the money. I will just send them an email and tell them to ask you for their money back. Because until my money is released, they will not get shipped their merchandise. Just think, you people can never do this to me again. Uh, I have the largest axe in the world listed on eBay right now for over $700. And if anyone purchases it, uh, until the day expires, I will send them an email uh, telling them. I will send them an email telling them that I cannot send it to them or sell it to them until their payment is unlocked to me, and I will withdraw all of it from PayPal. Then, and only then, will I uh, send it. Uh, uh, only then will I uh, send them that collector's piece. Uh, that payment has to be released and unlocked to me first. Uh, and so they need to get their money back uh, if eBay does not release that, if PayPal does not release that payment for that axe to me, uh, they need to get their money back. Uh, and then just send me a postal money order if they still want the merchandise. Because uh, uh, So anyway, um, now your people are holding only a little over $20 of my money right now. But I'm not about to uh, even give you the chance to hold over $700 of it. You will be holding their money, not mine, because until it is released, uh, they simply will not get the merchandise in the first place. Oh, by the way, uh, do you think that's unreasonable? Uh, well, if you do, just go through Walmart's line, and after your purchase, tell them you are going to go home with the merchandise and use it for 21 days. Uh, and if you like it, then and only then uh, will they get their money. Now, I don't have to tell you who they will elect to be Monday's moron and July's joke. After seeing a portion of those videos on YouTube, I thought, oh no, uh, you will never do this with my money ever again. Uh, until it is unlocked, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, you will never do this uh, with my money again. Uh, because un until, until it is unlocked, uh, uh, they just simply will not get their merchandise shipped out to them. Uh, once these last three items expire that I have listed with eBay, the only way I will ever ship anything in the future will be when the money is un unlocked. And until then, the people who made the, p the purchase will just have to wait and wait and wait 
until they decide to send me a post of money order or until uh, until you decide uh, or, or, uh, or rather you unlock the payment to me. Uh, because that payment is not mine. It, it belongs to them. It only becomes mine when I'm able to withdraw it for the merchandise they're purchasing. Now you people get your share of the sale with the fee you charge. You're not going to make money off the interest with me anymore. Now I'm going to skip a bit of this letter uh, to finish it out here. Uh, well, I'm going to give you just a little bit more to finish it out that I sent to them. Once again, I could have borne with more patience this whole episode that had I done anything wrong, but to have 100% satisfied customers and then to pull this stunt. And what really made it worse was when I went to all those videos on YouTube, especially the one did to the school teacher and the boy that says you all told him you are holding his eight thousand dollars for 180 uh, 180 days and he said he has fallen uh, suit against you all now at this point I need to thank you I would rather this happen now than after I advertise in the National Enquirer my new upcoming book uh, and the one I have now to a potential audience of 16 million people if I sold just a thousand copies, that would have been twenty-five thousand dollars of money you people would have had of mine, and could have sent me a letter at your own whim that you are holding it. But now, I don't have to worry about that because you people will never now have the chance to freeze that type of money on me. I may have been small financially in the past, uh, uh, but I lived with the hope—not uh, verbatim here—but I lived with the hope that maybe that would change someday. Uh, I may never sell a thousand copies of a book, uh, and I've never have sold that many uh, of the offshore book that I have. Uh, but I've never advertised in the National Enquirer either. Uh, you can only sell to people who even know that your merchandise exists in the first place. But had I sold uh, a thousand copies and they got that much, so I was just presenting to them a, a suppositious scenario based upon presumption uh, that would only be reality if it actually happened. Uh, but what really lit a fire under me, getting back to my letter, over this whole matter, were the YouTube videos, especially the teacher, because I also am a teacher. I freely teach Greg Shorthand online and have about 40 videos uploaded to teach anyone who wants to learn free what they cannot any longer hardly learn in any school or college. Uh, I do believe in having safeguards uh, that protect the bar. I do see that side of the coin. But in doing so, you all have unfairly balanced the equation uh, between buyer and seller. What about people who sell one ounce gold coins on eBay? Do you think that they are going to ship it out while you are sitting on their money telling them that a 21 day hold is on their 100% good feedback account? And recently, I never complained to you about it, but I mailed out a book and the people emailed me days later telling me they didn't get it only to find out that they didn't update their new mailing address when they moved. So I mailed them out another uh, copy right away to that new address, and guess what? Uh, I never got the first one back, and it had a return address on it. Uh, so uh, you see, these people got two books out of me for the price of one, because that first book will be forwarded to their new address that they had on file with the post office. Now, I didn't want to put in a dispute claim because if I would have, it would have affected their feedback. And they would only have contacted you, telling you all that they never got uh, uh, the book in the first place that they paid for. So I really don't see how you will ever come up with a system that will equally protect both parties. But when you do this, holding the people's money like you do to those with 100% feedback, uh, then you have crossed the line of proper business ethics. And uh, and seeing all those, and after seeing all those videos on YouTube, I became aware that you all are randomly doing it uh, to thousands of people and not giving them the interest you earn off of their money. And it is, it appears that it's a ploy on your side of the street to purposely do such as, so that you can collect interest. If just randomly you did this to a few hundred thousand people the money on interest alone you all would collect would be phenomenal. Uh, the poor school teacher on YouTube said it, it is only about $300 that you're holding of his, but he is off for the summer and that money would have helped him pay his electric bill. Now if I were to venture upon presumption as an employee of PayPal, knowing that your employer does this on a daily basis to thousands of their customers, I'm sure uh, they love to receive letters like this because others telling 
uh, uh, knowing that uh, their employer does this on a daily basis to thousands of their customers. I'm sure they love to receive uh, letters uh, telling the crooks that they work for uh, what what they would like to tell them their sales, but cannot without running the risk of losing their own job. Now, if I were an employee uh, for PayPal or eBay, I would very reluctantly tell anyone that I work for them. I'd be ashamed to let anyone know it, especially after seeing all those videos on YouTube. I never knew before it was as pathetic as it really is. Please don't waste your time emailing me back, telling me it is a select few that, that are disgruntled because it has grown to masses. You know, Occupy Wall Street could not have come at any better time. My newest book is on the Federal Reserve Bank, and I lecture out of the book for a little over an hour in a video on YouTube explaining the system to those interested, how our money system works. So if you ever want to put a face on this letter, just go to my YouTube channel of Moses, and if you hear my lecture on the Federal Reserve Bank, you will see that I do understand how banks work across the nation. I'm sure you all reason that you could understand more if it was coming from someone that we held thousands from, but this letter is on behalf of all the ones that are on YouTube, that you all have did this to, uh, to that have 100% feedback. Now, I'm not defending those sellers that have falsely advertised and ripped people off. Uh, anyway, you need not have to answer this letter at all. For after seeing all those videos on YouTube, I don't feel uh, that there is much you could ever say to justify your holding of all these people's money. Now, I gave you part of the letter, uh, and not all of it was 100% verbatim. Just a few parts wasn't uh, while giving it to you. So the reason why, too, I wanted to uh, cover some of those segments in the letter, because some of you have not thought of the su suppositious scenarios yet to present to them when dealing with them yourself when you send them a letter. Now, I think I was really blessed with a good, very good example uh, when I sent him a letter about, and by the way, when this happened to me, I sent a bunch of letters out, uh, and more letters than this one to him, and, uh, and even more so when I saw you ones who have posted videos on YouTube about it. Uh, so I felt like a voice had to come forth to uh, speak in behalf of you all also. But the, the coin that's sold in proof condition is a good example. Uh, maybe some of you sell uh, something that can be copied, and people order it, they copy it, and then they put in a complaint, oh, it wasn't 100% uh, advertised as I thought, and then they send it back, it's marred, it's scarred, it's rode in, it, uh, it's damaged in some kind of way, they get their money back, you get nothing, you're out of the postage, and, uh, and you can't even resell what you get back. See, it's an unbalanced equation. I do believe in protecting the buyer. And no doubt, a lot of buyers, you could watch Judge Judy, and you could see that some people have advertised cell phones, and all they did was show a picture of the cell phone. The people spend two or $300, and they get a picture of a cell phone. Now, you go to Judge Judy and see one girl who did that to some people who used eBay. And eBay gets worn out hearing these complaints, and they do have to protect their buyers if they are to maintain a professional business that people can trust to buy on. But, you see, people cannot buy on eBay unless there's a seller to sell to them. So the equation is unbalanced. Uh, the buyer is being protected. And, uh, yes, now if you want to buy anything on eBay, you are well protected. But the poor seller is at risk. And, and once again, now, I don't want to use eBay or PayPal at all for this next book that I'm... I'm uh, getting ready to market. I'll probably try to set up a separate, uh, I've, I've already got one website, I'll, I might set up another website for it, uh, or just advertise it in newspapers, and uh, postal money orders is the best to, to, to do, folks. If it, My advice is when, if they have put holes on your account, you still want to sell on eBay. When anybody purchases anything from you, you send them back a quick email and you say, I'm sorry, I'd love to send you the merchandise. But they have held up your money. Make sure you emphasize your money. Uh, it won't be my money until they unlock it and let the transaction go through. I cannot pay for postage and ship merchandise to you uh, without first getting payment. Uh, the same way, I cannot go to Walmart and buy merchandise. And when they ask for their money, I can't say it. 
Well, no, wait, you'll get it in 21 days. I've got to try it first. And after I wear your clothes and stretch them out and put them on my child that might be a, a toddler that might even use the restroom and the diapers or whatever you purchase for them, uh, if I don't think the it all pans out and I don't like it or if I get tired of it after 21 days, I'll come up with some lame excuse and I'll return it. And that way I didn't have to pay you and I got to use your merchandise free. And uh, mar it and scar it up a little bit. Oh no, uh, you're going to pay for that merchandise before you leave the store with it. Well, that's the way sellers need to make a stand on eBay. Uh, they need to just tell the people, I'm sorry. It's your money they have held up. It's not my money. It would never be my money until they release it to me. So they are messing you over because they are preventing you from buying something that you really want to buy that you can't find nowhere else sometimes. There are some things you purchase on eBay. I've got the largest axe in the world. As the making of this, uh, this is, I think today is November the 12th, 2011. So if some of you later on see this and go looking for the biggest axe with serial number two, on it uh, on eBay you won't find it but as of right now I've got the largest axe in the world I handmade it it took three and a half days to make that's why it I'm selling it for a little over seven hundred dollars if it sells it sells if it don't it don't no big deal I mean don't send me no email saying that's too much to ask for an axe I know what went into making it and uh, and so anyway and I'm talking about hours and hours each day for about three and a half days now a younger man if he knew how might be able to make it quicker, but I like to take my time. I am notoriously known as Slow Joe. Uh, and I even let that be known when I go on a job. If I go on a job punching a time clock and they try to rush me, I'll let them know, oh, no. Now, I am notoriously known as Slow Joe. I believe in quality of work. And sometimes you cannot get quality and quantity at the same time. Some things have a time element involved. To do the job and do it right and get it right the first time. But anyway, folks, just, just send the people back an email and say, sorry, I'd love to sell it to you. But eBay is holding up, uh, PayPal is holding up your money. They will not allow your payment to be unlocked to me. Now, if you, uh, excuse me, if you contact uh, PayPal and tell them that, hey, look, uh, get off the stick here. I've been doing business with you a long time. I want, I want to buy what this person has. Unlock the money to them. Because until you do, I don't get the merchandise. And you see, that way they run the risk, they've got a deadlock, and they run the risk of losing both the buyer and the seller. Uh, one per person had a uh, uh, 32,000, over 32,000 transactions. And they went to purchase something from me. I forgot what it was. It might have been one of them big, big cleavers. And uh, they tried that uh, payment hold. Oh, look, I, g I gave them a call, and I said, by the way, this person that's trying to buy it from me, I said, uh, now I called them on this issue. I said, they have already 30, over 32,000 transactions they have used PayPal and eBay for. And now I'm going to have to contact them, send them a, uh, 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 an email, and let them know that you're holding up their money and they're not going to be able to purchase what they want to purchase from me because you all will not unlock their payment to me. Well, do you think they were going to run the risk of losing that person uh, uh, as a as a, a prime customer, oh no, they unlocked that money like that. When I got that money, I went, uh, if I recall correctly, I went and withdrew it out. And then I sent the person the package. And then I brought up this issue with them. I said, in everything that I advertise, I advertise truly to the letter. And I said, I even let them know that I offer no refunds. So since I don't offer no refunds in the first place, I said, uh, how do you justify holding my money from me? Because I let it be known before they purchase from me. It's just like you see the merchandise here. And once you purchase it, there is no refund. Uh, so, but no matter how I tried to reason with them this last time, and I did write the CEO a handwritten letter, three pages, and he's a nice fella. Now, Mr. D John Donahoe is a very nice person, and I think he is very concerned about uh, even the small man, uh, you know, uh, he's a stockholder, a major stockholder. Now, I'm giving him the benefit on the doubt of venturing upon that presumption. But once again, when you write a letter, it just gets to an employee. And, uh, and even their executives over them, they're just an employee. 
I have given you uh, a list earlier of all the major stockholders of eBay and uh, and the millions upon millions of shares and billions of dollars it's all worth. It's not like you're just addressing one person and they're going to take it personally. They're not. No matter how much you, no matter how many I's you dot and cross your T's, if you could speak with the tongue of a seraphim and put it in a handwritten letter or do a video or whatever. Now, it would be really unreasonable for them to even take it as a personal affront because it's not just one owner. You're dealing with thousands of people. But now here's what I look for to happen. In the future, they're, they're going to mess over an attorney or so and uh, that sells on eBay. And he's going to send them a letter, something to this. He's going to say, look, I'm getting ready to sue you all if you don't release my money. And once I file a suit, I will file a means of discovery, which means that every stockholder, I will do it against every stockholder that you have. That means every entity that's involved as a shareholder even. I will make sure they receive this and have, uh, have it served to them by a process server. They will ha have to make known to me through this lawsuit their assets, their money's worth, and everything. And I will gladly, as the plaintiff in this lawsuit, turn all this personal information on all your shareholders over to the IRS and let the IRS have a heyday with it. Uh, now, you either unlock it or I'll file suit. And I know you're billionaires, but that's all right. You're going to have to have a transparency about yourself once a suit is filed that you've never had to reveal before. And just the money in litigation fees, it's going to cost you. Uh, to fight this suit and the person can say to them if they are a lawyer being a lawyer it's only going to take my time and paper and ink so uh, there's ways to effectively put a stop to all this now is there an answer has any can anybody come up with the perfect equation to balance off to satisfy both the buyer and the seller here I don't think so I don't think there is a perfect equation to come up with, if I was Mr. Donahoe and all the major stockholders, the top five, I would offer my employees, I'd have a meeting with them, and I'd offer them a $10,000 bonus fee to anyone who could come up with the perfect equation, wherein we would never have to put a 21-day hold on people's money, uh, where we could both protect the buyer and the seller. Is there an equation out there that could satisfy both sides? I don't know, but right now, the system I don't think so, but there may be. But the system the way it is now is really against the seller. You cannot have no buyer unless you have a seller. And, uh, and folks, I, I don't know. I, I'm just telling you what, what happened to me. I, I thought I'd put in, give you some ideas of how I've dealt with them. So if you have thought that you are the only ones that this has happened to, and if you've tried to come up with different ways to deal with them, uh, maybe I've given you a few more ideas on how you can try to reason with them when it happens to you in the future. Now, in the future, whether it's a book or whatever, if you order a book from me, a cleaver, or an axe, or whatever I sell, and if they send me, and I go to my PayPal account, and they say payment is pending, I will simply send you an email back and saying, sorry, they're holding your money, not mine. It's not mine until it's released. Uh, now, once they release it, if you want what I've got to sell, then I will send it to you. But until they release it, I'm not sending it to you. That way, uh, they're not going to put no hold on my mind. I'm not going to ship merchandise across the country, and you've got what I worked hard to make, and somebody else has got the money for it. And they're going to hold it for 21 days and earn the interest off of Oh, no. Uh, I'm not, if I can help it, I'm not going to let them make Monday's moron and July's joke out of me. No, I'm going to put the shoe on the, the buyer's foot and let them deal with eBay. Let them deal with uh, PayPal. And I think that is one of the most effective ways to put a stop to this 21-day hold. Just contact your customers. Say, sorry, I've been doing business for years. And yes, some of you are repeated customers, and I know your money's good. But those that you're dealing with, the medium of exchange, the escrow holder, PayPal, uh seems to think, even though I have 100% feedback, that they they have just on a, a whimsical whim decided they'd like to make interest off my money, off my balance in the account for 21 days. So and until they release your money, your payment to me, uh, you can't get your merchandise. Uh, 
Now, if you can find somebody else on eBay that'll send you their merchandise and let somebody else hold the money for it for 21 days, so be it. But I'm just blessed to where I feel like I'm blessed with a higher degree of wisdom that dictates to me that that's not the wisest thing for any seller to do. And I say that not in arrogancy, uh, uh, but it, wisdom is wisdom, folks. I mean, even Walmart or you go to a local drugstore to get your pharmaceutical medicines or the grocery store, you don't get there and say, well, thank you. I'm going to go try the grits and the potatoes, and if any of it's spoiled or whatever, uh, I'm going to try it out for 21 days. I'm going to try the clothes out I bought from the clothing store for 21 days. And if I don't like it, uh, I'll come back with a complaint and uh, just give it to you back. Uh, but now if I like it, after 21 days, I'll come back here then and give you your money. You see, in the real world, it doesn't work that way. And we shouldn't stand still and let the e-commerce world uh, try to make it work that way. Thank you for tuning in.